For the past few weeks, I've been out shooting with the Sony A9 mirrorless camera, and the performance of this camera is pretty well documented already. It's a year and a half old, so I'm a little late to this party, but I still wanted to go out and put this camera to the test doing the things that I like to do, really fast moving birds, and I was really surprised with the performance of this camera. I'll talk more at the end of this video about what I really like about this camera and why I decided to keep it, but for now, let's go see what this camera can do. It's a misty morning on the pond in one of my favorite local spots. That golden light on the water would make for some great action shots, and I'm here to try out the Sony A9, a camera that is well known for its ability to capture amazing action-filled moments. And a lonely gull was nice enough to fly in for my first subject. Shooting into the sun like this is always difficult on the camera's autofocus system, and the A9 snapped into focus immediately on this bird. I fired off a quick burst of shots. Whoa, this camera is blazing fast and it performed extremely well, helping me capture this incredible short moment with some nice reflections. The bird was then nice enough to fly in a little closer, and even in the early morning light, the A9 did an excellent job of keeping focus on the bird's face and its breakfast. That's a nice sized fish it has too. Not much else going on here, so I decided to take a quick stroll to see what else I could find. Ah, a living work of art decided to pose for me. This is a male painted bunting. Always a treat to see these colorful little birds. I used a small focus area to help focus around all the interesting leaves surrounding this bird. And immediately to my left, I noticed this beautiful little male prairie warbler who proudly poses in a Brazilian pepper bush. Photographing smaller birds is always a challenge, but well worth the effort. I head over to the beach in hopes of getting some more wildlife action and good light. This group of black skimmers gives me exactly what I'm looking for. They turn and come flying over some crashing waves, and I grab this shot. I notice a glint of golden light on the incoming waves and focus my attention there, grabbing this shot. And hey, look, there's a pelican off in the background waving at me. Hey, buddy, what's up? Hey, why not try some luck with these pelicans? This beauty was nice enough to pose for me so I could get a good detailed shot. And man, I'm impressed with the amount of feather detail I see here. And check out that beak. It looks like it's made from old weathered wood. The A9 is no slouch in this department either when you can get close enough to your subject. And I really like how smooth the 100 to 400 lens renders those blue and white colors in the background. But I really need some fast moving subjects to test this camera. Let's see what we can find. A very large school of mullet slowly swims through the inlet. This should liven things up quite nicely. Our young pelican takes advantage of this plentiful bounty of food and fills its pouch with one giant mullet. You can clearly see the outline of this huge fish in the pelican's pouch. Pelicans are notorious for getting food that is much too big for them to handle, and this is no exception. Our young pelican slowly trips out to sea and tries its hardest to swallow its large catch. It realizes it has bitten off much more than it can chew, and it decides to dump the huge mullet back into the drink. Crazy! A weak fish will never go to waste in this environment, and it isn't long until my favorite bird takes notice. It leaps from its high vantage point, showing those piercing eyes, and you can't overlook those piercing talons either. It stretches its wings and comes in for an easy meal. Ah yes, the most amazing bird on the planet. I can always count on the osprey to come in and give me some photographic moments that highlight why wildlife photography is so amazing, awesome, incredible, beautiful, marvelous, stunning, fascinating, shocking, unbelievable, surprising, wonderful, stupendous, astonishing, and all around special. That last little bit was dedicated to the few people who tell me I use those words too much in my videos. Just saying. And the A9 helped me capture a beautiful series of images here as the fabled osprey lifts its huge fish from the water, gripping it with just three talons, and flies far away to eat its well-deserved catch. Absolutely incredible. In case you're wondering just how big those fish are, here's a clip with some humans for size reference, and they've netted so many that it takes two people to pull them into the boat. Hey, save some of those fish for the wildlife next time, will ya? Let's make like these pelicans and head out to a different location in search of some more incredible wildlife. Oh, how nice! A group of American avocets lazily soaking in the calm waters. Not exactly the fast-paced action I'm looking for. Maybe this great blue heron will provide us with some nice fast-paced hunting. I guess not. Ah, a reddish egret. Now that is a bird worthy of some nice fast-paced action photography and you can always count on grabbing some awesome shots of these birds as they throw their wings up over their head like this. 
You can also get some strange shots too, like this one, where the bird has transformed into a ballet dancer who's going to walk on water. You can also expect a strike or two like this. And hopefully the bird catches a nice tasty fish like this big fat mud minnow. Yet another excellent test where the A9 passed with flying colors. Ha, pun intended. All right, let's head out to another location and see what we can find. Our next location has a standing on the shore of Lake Kissimmee, home to some impressive bald eagles like this one. This bird was too far away for photography, but it was still worthy of some awesome slow motion video footage as the huge bird descends from high in the sky, tilting back and forth in the wind before coming in and snatching a fish from the surface of the water like it's the simplest task in the world. That's just crazy. What do you know, a tricolored heron with its head buried deep in the water. This is where the speed of the A9 really shows its potential. You get to capture practically every single moment in time as it flies by at an astonishing pace. Look at those water droplets around the bird as it brings its head up. Magical stuff here. And then the moment the bird tosses the fish into its mouth before proceeding to walk on water. Simply amazing. Our next subject, this crazy looking anhinga doesn't want to be left out of the photo shoot as it comes out of the water with a single minnow on its spear shaped beak. Seriously, this bird barely has a grip on the fish. I don't know how they do it. And it looks like our tricolored heron wasn't quite satisfied with that tiny minnow. This time it comes flying in with a largemouth bass as big as its head. And in case you're wondering just how this bird could swallow such a big fish, here's some somewhat nerve rattling slow motion footage of that fish seeing daylight for the very last time. Wow, what else can we find here? A purple gallinule, one of the most beautifully colored water birds in Florida. These birds tend to be a little skittish, so I'm surprised that this bird was this close. Whoa, did you see that? That gallinule just snatched a bug right out of the air. Let's back it up and pause the video. Look right around here in three, two, one, go. There it is. Purple gallinules like to eat bugs. I never knew that. I'd love to capture a shot of this bird in flight, but I never see them flying. And that was about to change. Not only was this purple gallinule nice enough to fly for me, but it came flying in with a huge water lily bud in its beak. This was the moment I was sold on the A9. The camera locked focus on this bird as it was flying towards me over a busy background and never once lost focus in a single frame. In this video, I'm only showing a few of the many shots as the bird came flying in. And the last shot in the series is my absolute favorite. Look at this crazy image. Not only is this beautiful bird in flight with a flower bud, but we get a nice shot of those huge feet. You hardly ever see this bird's feet because they're always submerged. An incredible set of images from an absolutely amazing bird. Let's head off to one more location for sunset. And that is how you catch a fish. This is a little blue heron. These birds are white during their first year of life, and apparently they're brilliant at fishing. I wanted to capture a shot of this bird in good afternoon light, so I did. Lots of detail here, and a nice reflection as well. A red shoulder hawk was nice enough to come pose for me on a nearby signpost, and I quietly crept closer to get some beautiful shots of this gorgeous bird bathed in late afternoon light. The bird called to me, giving me these shots with its mouth wide open. The perfect way to end the day, but I've got one more surprise in store for you. This wild looking sunset. I've been back to this location in hopes of catching this sunset again, but so far I've only seen it like this one time. Those old palm trees block just enough of that light to make for one heck of a composition. An amazing way to end my first few weeks with the Sony A9. So those were just the highlights of my first few weeks shooting with the Sony A9. And within, I'd say, a couple of days, I fell in love with this camera and was sold on it. And there's quite a few reasons why. Uh, first and foremost, the autofocus speed and accuracy of this camera is unlike any other camera I have used. It is extremely fast and extremely accurate. I think it's faster than my D500. I also think it's faster than my D850 with the 500 f4. You can just turn around, boom, it nails focus. There's no guessing. Um, and that's a huge thing. When you're looking through the viewfinder of this camera, 
There's no guessing about anything. There's all this awesome tactile feedback of what's going on. You know that your subject's in focus because you get all of these focus indicators. You know what your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO looks like because all of that is rendered live in the viewfinder. You also get a histogram, which is really helpful. There's no guessing. It just works and it's absolutely incredible. The other really exceptional thing about this camera is the lack of any kind of blackout in the EVF. When you're shooting like a DSLR camera, the mirror slaps up and down and blacks out the screen. And it's not really noticeable because it's something we've been doing for years. But when you go to this and you no longer have that blackout, it's absolutely amazing and extremely liberating. Um, it's, it's really hard to describe. Those of you that have shot with one of these mirrorless cameras that actually doesn't have blackout or EVF lag, you know what I'm talking about. This is one of those cameras. And speaking of that, the live view at 20 frames per second, there's no lag. You're seeing everything that's happening in the world in real time, making, making it extremely easy um, to keep your subject in the frame at all times. It's just, it's, it's an amazing camera. Another thing worth noting is this camera has IVIS or in-body image stabilization to where it kind of stabilizes the sensor inside the camera. This is extremely helpful for shooting handheld. You can actually hold this camera with one hand and fire away um, because of the IBIS and because it's small and lightweight. But IBIS really helps keep the images steady. Um, you can shoot at much slower shutter speeds um, and still get really good images and really good video. And because of that, and because this camera is so small, you don't really need to carry a tripod. You can just grab this camera and go. And another really cool thing I like about it is how small it is. And not because of the weight, it, it's, it's a light camera, sure, but I'm talking about this camera being small, it's less inconspicuous. When you're carrying around a big 500 millimeter F4, you draw a lot of attention to yourself. I've actually had the police called on me before because somebody thought I was spying on them. When you carry this around, nobody notices because they think you just have this tiny little toy. And that's actually quite helpful as well. At this point when I made this video, the Sony A9 was a year and a half old. So I know how technology moves really quickly. I can only imagine what Sony has hidden away that they're gonna reveal here pretty soon. It's gonna be a great time to be a photographer. Um, and that's really what I think about this camera. And those are all the reasons why I chose to keep it. I'll go ahead and address some of the issues that people don't like about the Sony cameras. Um, a lot of people say they're too small and the ergonomics, it's uncomfortable. Uh, I don't really have a problem with the ergonomics. I've played guitar for over 30 years, so I'm used to my hands taking a little bit of abuse. It's just something you deal with to get good results. Um, a lot of people don't like the button layout on this camera. I don't have an issue with that either. I pretty much adapted to it within a couple days. People complain about the menu system on this camera. Again, it's foreign, but it, I adapted to it pretty quickly. Um, some people say they don't like the color. I know the white balance on this camera is a little iffy, um, so it takes a little time to dial that in and that's something I'm still working on. But other than that, I don't really have any problems with this camera other than getting a lot of great images. And I'm serious, at 20 frames per second, you have to be real conservative about how you're shooting this camera and you're gonna get a lot of images to go through and all of them are in focus and that's really important. So that's what I think about the A9 and why I kept it. I'm sure this video is gonna bring up a lot of questions. Um, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to uh, answer all of those. And as always, don't forget to click that thumbs up. Um, share this video because that's really helpful to me. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that because I have all kinds of cool stuff planned. I can't wait to take this camera out west with me to Colorado to shoot some hummingbirds, eagles in Washington, or even to Costa Rica. It's gonna be a good time. I'm gonna bring all of you with me. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you later.